Does the fire bother anybody? No. No, I actually I like find it, it I quite. Like, I'm about yeah. to say, I like that. Yeah. So I bought it. Uh, I go to Reiki and shit. Gives it gives an ambience. COVID, COVID taught me how to spirituality. Nice. Or, or more of it. Nice. So now I'm buying like, I think this candle is called like. I don't Winter know. solstice. Oh, yeah, yeah. Now it's like, yeah. I have racks in my pockets that I put out on full moons to charge them. Really? I Yeah, I've yeah. lost my mind. Yeah, no, you have it. You're, you're becoming in touch with your d- different side. I hope so. It's, it's not losing your mind at all. There's something there. My wife's looking side. at me like I'm crazy. Um, I think all of our wives look like us like we're crazy. Oh, my That's wife just normal. thinks I'm, I'm. My wife thinks I'm crazy. Yeah, I think, yeah. I think all of our wives think we're crazy, which is good though, because it shows that you got the the polar, yes. you know, the opposites attract. I had this conversation with somebody today, and I'm like, God forbid, my wife was anything remotely like me, we wouldn't be married. <laughs> yeah, it would be I, just with constant your punctuality. Fight. I wouldn't, I wouldn't stay with you. It'd be constant fights. That's it. <laughs> we know what our wives compliment us. I they always do. tell my wife, yeah. "You make me better." Yep, and um. She, she, I tell her, like, she, when I retired, she the door. Yeah, you're the when best. I retired, she, you know, one of the things I did, I thanked her at my retirement. And she's like, I didn't do anything. I said, you made me better Everything. for the, for the last six years of my life that I spent with you. My, it, it made me become more of a teacher and, and understanding my role as a teacher because she's a teacher. I said, it made me understand that I had to take all the knowledge that I have obtained over the course of my career mm-hmm. from so many great leaders. And I had to share that. If not, then it was pointless. And I said, I learned that by watching you as a teacher. So she said, wow, I, I didn't think of it that way. I said, so you inspired me to be better at, my, at the last six years of my career where I could really take all of that knowledge and just download it to people and mm-hmm. say, here, you know, my job is to pass it on, to share. And if I don't, then I failed. Yeah. Wow. And how did you guys meet? A wedding. Actually, I was the best man at a wedding. Nice. And, um, locally? <laughs> locally, nice. yes. There was Good a gentleman job. that was in the army. And um, we had lost the hall where we were going to have it, be- the wedding, because a pipe had burst. So we were scrambling. Oh, sounds like an election. Yeah. A pipe burst actually <laughs> like an hour before the wedding. Yeah. So we were like scrambling. So we were having the reception at Carmela's yeah. in Dunmore. Yeah. And it's um, a good place. It is. So we just decided, hey, it's an hour before. Let's have it right there in the stairs. It was. Yeah. They had just landscaped it, so it was really nice and looked pretty. That's awesome. So before the reset, before you know, the groom was a little nervous. My wife was not a bartender, but a family member. They called and said, "Look, our bartender called in. We have three parties going on. Can you come help? You you do drink, so you have some concept." Mm-hmm. And she's like, <laughs> <laughs> "Okay, I don't have the bartender." So wow. she ended up coming down. We walked in. And I said, "If I don't get you a drink, your wife, soon to be wife's going to kill you." She turned around. She said hello, and the exact words I said to that guy is that. I said, I'm going to marry that girl. He said, do you know her? I said, nope. Mm. I said, I'm going to marry her. I said, love at first sight. Were you sober? Yes, I, oh, don't, wow. I, don't, I don't drink. <laughs> oh, neither do I. There you go. I don't drink. So. And I met my wife in a similar way. She worked over at Cooper's. See? She turned the corner, and I saw a small, angry woman. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, and then Dreamweaver came out of my head, and the purple park hands came on, and I was like, wow. she doesn't know it yet. Yeah. And then the next year, I could be considered a criminal just because of stalking. Oh, I stalked my wife. Yeah, it was bad. I told her that. I said, I said, honestly, truly, I stalked you. She's like, no, you didn't. I said, oh, kind. I said, by today's definition of the word and how people react. Oh, yeah. I said, oh, God. I, was, I mean, because you got to think about it. Like, back then, you were just in a bush. Yeah. Well, but it, but it was a different world. When you there's were, no social media, you got to kind of do it a different way. Like, now these kids have it easy. When I when I saw my wife. I once I, sent a letter to a girl. Ooh, how long ago wow. was that? Wow. 1999. We broke up. And all I had was a pager. 1925? Wow. No, 1999. <laughs> nice. I, I saw my wife at college and started calling all the go- girls' dorms and just started room-to-room calling. Wow. This nice. is this girl. This is this girl. I don't know. And I did that for about an hour. Wow. And at, at a certain point, all the guys <laughs> in my dorm had kind of gathered to see this shit show that was me trying to find this girl. And I finally called a room, and this girl goes, hold on a second. And then somebody gets on the phone. She's like, who's this? I'm like, uh, I'm looking for this girl. I heard her name was Lauren. I don't know. And uh, she's in, and, she, and I said, you know, is that you? Can you like describe yourself? <laughs> it's like super creepy. I would never be yeah. able to do that on and a phone no call. And no joke. Her response was, and I'd only seen her like twice from a distance. Wow. And her response was, how about this? How about the next time you see this girl that you think is so amazing? You grow a set of balls, man up, and go talk to her. Good and she her. hung up on me. Nice. And I get off the phone, and I was like, Whoop. found her. And they were like, so how did that go? I was like, this girl's a bitch, but I'm going to marry her. <laughs> like, this, and was, for me, it was love at first phone call. Absolutely. Was this on CSU? 
Uh, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Very nice. That's and awesome. uh, yeah. And literally I saw her like a day or two later and she kind of gave me this look like, you going to come talk to me? And I'm like, yes, I am. And we were married seven months later. Six oh, and a half months later. Good for you. That's, I like uh, that. Wow. Well, I, well got her, I got her pregnant in between. There's a reason. <laughs> there's, it, wasn't, it wasn't all love. No, it was, there was a little bit of a involved. shotgun. Well, no, it's because in Jersey at the time, non-family couldn't be in the delivery room. And I wanted to be there for the birth of my child. I literally, she she got herself what? pregnant. Um, she got herself pregnant? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, you, you had nothing, I had to, nothing do to do with that. Nothing to do with it. Nothing. Um, and so it was like, listen. It was immaculate. Yeah. And uh, I said, listen, I want to be there for the birth of my child. I'm going to be in this kid's life. Like, I'm, I'm going to, you know. Yeah. And I literally told her, I said, so we're going to get married so I can be there. And she said, okay. Wow. And we, we fell in love over two months of dating and got married. We're in Jersey because I'm from Jersey. Um, so the shore area, like uh, Brick, that that whole, you know. Okay. Uh, is it Avalon? Tom, a, I grew up near the summit near Hoboken, New Jersey. Yeah, yeah. Mm. So. My don't sister think, lived there for years. The only thing I really know about Avalon is when you see people from Green Ridge come back with vacation photos. Yes. Mm -hmm. you, it's like yeah. oh, there's always a boat that says Avalon on the shore that they take a photo mm -hmm. with. And I'm just like, oh, I wonder where that magical place is. Yeah. Um, so- is is it strange to you that out of all the places that you've been, out of all the places that you lived, <laughs> the one that was that in your head clicked, this is the one, was at Carmela's in Dunmore? It's strange. <laughs> like, do you ever ponder that? Like, do you ever just sit? Like, what is the cosmic universal I, I tell uncertainty people, of this moment? Well, he, here's I'll take it even a step further. I mean, this is not. It wasn't my first time in Scranton. I actually went to Keystone College where Brian Bolus Jr. was my roommate. At Keystone. Who's Brian Bowles Jr.? Bowles, Bowles Trucking. Like the which one? Like Bob's, Bob's <laughs> Bob, son? Bob, Bob's son was my roommate in college at oh. Keystone. Oh, so, good. <laughs> yeah. So was he was he cool? Who the son? Bob, the son, yeah. Oh, the son was incredible. The father yeah. is the same Something as he is else. now. Yeah. yeah. The son well, at least he's never changed. The son <laughs> was completely opposite. When yeah. I tell you in college, him and I were the best of buddies. Yeah. Like, we called him Beaker. Yeah. You've never seen him. He was just jacked up. I mean, not Lifted the Muppet, all time. right? No, nah, he okay. jacked up kid. <laughs> the chinless yeah. Muppet. Yeah, he was, he, was a good, he was a really good guy. But um, he brought me down to Scranton several times, and some of the guys that were in our dorm were all from Scranton. So I'd been to Scranton in, in the early 90s. So when I was offered, I was actually offered to be stationed um, how I ended up here in Vegas, and I was loving that. But my father got sick, and I went to the Army and said, look, I need to be close to my dad. I've been given a year to live. Yeah. Can you help me out? And they were like, well, Scranton, Pennsylvania, you ever heard of it? And I laughed and said, yes, I have. Well, where are you from? Some in New Jersey, about an hour and a half away from Oh, that's here. right. You literally so, just said that. So they were like, <laughs> hey, is that close to your house? I said, yes. And I went to college, like right up the street. Yeah. So that's how I ended up here. But to, to find out that I have to come to Scranton to find the love of my life, I find it hilarious. Dude, I'm with you. I found <laughs> her when, she, when I moved back from L.A., oh, which is another connection I just found out that I guess we have. I have hope, then. Really? Yeah, dude. All <laughs> roads lead to Scranton. Listen, All roads lead to Scranton. Love, hey, you, anyone can find love in Scranton. Yeah, I promise that's you. Right. But Aja, based on our conversation the other night, which I will not bring up here, I think we all know why you're not <laughs> married. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yep. I think we know. We all, we all uh, talked about that before. Yeah. I think we know. Yeah, we that's all a lose, talked about lose that. situation. Let's not yeah. have that conversation yeah. uh, right now. Something no. you don't do to women. Uh -uh. Uh -uh. <laughs> wait, wait. No, no. Uh, okay, for everyone listening, it's not what you think it is, but it kind of is. So, <laughs> <laughs> oh, so okay. So you have. Uh, an interesting distinction of being in two branches of the United States military, which is the Navy and the Army. Yes. Which one was first and yeah. why? And then which one was second and why? Well, initially I joined the Navy and I spent 10 years. Why I picked the Navy, honestly, I initially went to the Army and they had failed me at MAPS. I had broke my ankle in high school and it never healed correctly. So the Army was saying, hey, we need to break your ankle put a pin in it, then we'll let you join. Mm. I looked at him and said, are you insane? Yeah. And as I'm walking out, the Navy recruiter walks over to me. We'll take a, you. In the shadiest <laughs> way possible. You don't need an ankle to swim. And says, he goes, hey, we'll take you. Exactly. <laughs> we'll take you. He says, you're going to wait 30 days and I'll bring you back. Wow. 30 days later, I went back. And a buddy of mine was also in the Navy, someone I looked up to, and he told me how much fun he had. So I said, fine, I'll join. So I joined the Navy, and I loved it. I, I loved everything about it. Traveling. What did you do? Fun. I worked with special operations, intelligence, community, wow. uh, communications, and also was an MP. Damn. So 
it was a it was a fun job. The only problem is it's a fun job for a single person or someone that doesn't like their family. <laughs> because I wasn't home and I was telling him I said at five years old, my son's fifth fifth birthday, we were having a party and I normally take those moments to do self reflection. And I was sitting there looking at him going, Wait, I've been like gone. Big events in life yes. you take okay. I always sit back and, and self reflect. I'm like right. three and a half years of this kid's life I have been gone, deployed at some point or somewhere. And I said, I got to stop. And I had another son in a way because I want to be that kind of father like my dad. So I said, fine. You know, I made the decision, went back and said, guys, I'm going to get out. Well, LAPD came and calling and said, hey, we'll take you because we LA- heard they fixed your ankle. No, <laughs> <laughs> LAPD takes military. They're really big on hiring military yeah. guys. So it was a real smooth transition. Also, being that I was MP trained already in the mm-hmm. military. So they were like, here. So I actually ended up, you know, getting out. LAPD. Unfortunately, 9-11 happened and I was recalled back to active duty um, by the Navy. Uh, shocking to me that that could happen, but it happened. And while I was deployed to the Middle East in preparation for it's what it is, they were fortifying all the bases and staging equipment and they had us basically pulling guard duty. There was an army guy that looked like G.I. Joe. He literally cut chisel face. Guy looked like G.I. Joe, but he was a great leader. And I'm like, this guy is something, you know, I want to be like this guy. I love the way he does things. So I came back and said, hey, can I cross over? And they looked at me and said, you sure you want to do that? I said, absolutely. So they, you know, magic wand was waved. They let me cross over. Also, I did want to go on and be part of the ground force for this reason. I was very angry. 2,997 innocent people had died. Mm -hmm. I knew we were going to war in the Middle East, and I wanted to be on the ground because people needed to pay. Some people look at that and say that's wrong, and I tell people, and so be it. On Judgment Day, I'm going to stand in front of whoever I'm standing in front of and say I have no regrets. 2,997 people died for no reason. People needed to be paid for it, and I wanted to be part of that. So that was another factor in me wanting to be in the Army. I wanted to be on the ground in whatever country it was that we were going after. So I ended up crossing over and getting to spend 15 years there. And if you ask me which one is better, I'll say yes. They're both phenomenal for different reasons. I, I don't have one or the other that I love more. I just, I feel lucky and honored and blessed that I was able to serve double digit years in both. Don't they consider, but so what, so were you like on literally on the ground when you went to the army? Yes. Like what was your job there? Cause you were intelligence and stuff over in the Navy. Well, you when you work operations. Part of my job when I deploy, it depends on what type of unit you're in. Um, you're a soldier first, and yeah. no matter what your job is, your job is carry a gun. Whatever is needed, you do. Whatever you, whatever your unit needs to perform or task. Part of our job when we were there, we were escorting supply convoys. So we provided security for the companies that were, you know, because you had to have supply lines. That's how you replenished your troops that were scattered throughout the country. It wasn't always by mail drop. It was most of the time by vehicles. So we would provide security for them because they would always try to shoot and take those you know, attack the convoy so that they could grab the food, yeah. equipment, whatever. And if you cut off your enemy's supply lines, it's a quick way to defeat them. Right. Any any army knows that. Cut off the supply line, fastest way to defeat someone. So, like, were you in like the lead car or? Uh, it, it always it always varied. Okay. It always varied. Yes, I mean, he was always the lead car. Well, no, I'm saying like <laughs> I mean I don't no, know. no 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 no. The commanders normally like I was blessed to serve with some phenomenal commanders. All right, like like officers. Was this and Afghanistan first? This was Iraq first. And they just, the, the commanders there, the two commanders that I served under were, one of them we had to reel in a little bit because he, he really, he had a little bit too much ramble in him. And he wanted to, he had the old adage. He said, I'm the leader. Like Patton? Yeah. I go okay. first. I step on the field first. I step on the last. Mm. But there were times you'd have to pull him back saying, if you get shot and killed, we're, that is not going to look good for us, sir. Yeah, they so, used to consider that like a death down. wish. Mm. Yeah, well, yeah. this guy. He and it wasn't he. He didn't have a death wish. He always said, "I'm not going to make you do anything." Yeah, I won't do first. But we're also like, you're the commander, and even though you're one person, the symbol of losing our commander mm-hmm. is unacceptable. So we need to be mindful and kind of pull you back. And the second commander I served for was prototypical, perfect guy. He had read Patton. He had studied Petraeus. He had studied Schwarzkopf. Pal. He knew how to lead, and his whole thing was. He would come to the senior enlisted guys and go, what do we need to do? He'd say, give me a plan. We have mm-hmm. to get from here to here and identify 
you know, what the danger zones are. And he said, now make a plan. I'll be back and you'll pitch. And we had a thing we call in Iraq or anywhere you're, you're stationed. You have what's called a sand table. It's something normally that's built about the size of this table. And it's basically a, a small replica of wherever you are. You can put buildings, trees, you know, oh, it's yeah, sand. Yeah. And we would, that's how you would, it's called a sand table. We would go through our mission with our troops on how you're going to do it. We would rehearse it, practice it, do it on there. And then we would set up a little area to, on how we we're going to do it with tape and stakes. If it was a clearing of a building, we would basically make the building out of the tape and the sticks. So you could be on the outside with no walls watching exactly how we're going to enter a building, how we're going to clear it, contingencies, different things that we expect. And that's how our commander was. He was a real, I don't want to say hands off because that's doing him, that's not doing him a service. He really trusted us. Micromanage. Not at all. He, he always said, you don't screw up. Great. Brief me. And if it doesn't make sense and I say, I'm not impressed. Keep mm. going. And that was his favorite word. Yeah. He never said, you guys suck or this and that. He would say, I'm not impressed. But I'm not impressed means you need to do more. We would do more. And then he would look at it. Okay. All right. What time do we roll out? And you'd look at him sometimes and say, well, maybe you can sit this one out. And he'd look at you and go, do you really think I'm going to do that? Mm-hmm. No. <laughs> wow. But he would always say, what do you want me? He didn't, I need to be here. He would come up to you and say, where do you want me in this convoy? What car? Because we'd always tell them, if you're always sitting in the front seat, all right, the guy that's sitting off in the mountain shooting mortars is going to say, hmm, commander always sits in the front seat. Let's shoot that guy. Mm -hmm. So we would always rotate the leadership. But he was always, you know, in a position where he could oversee everything. So I was blessed and lucky to deploy with phenomenal leaders. And I tell people, I only saw one instance where I saw an officer that um, I said, wow, this guy has watched and played Call of Duty one too many times. Because he didn't get it. It's it's crazy. I mean, because for for me, I'm a, I'm a huge fan of history and leadership. And you pretty much just nailed in, in the two commanders you worked under the two biggest principles. Never ask somebody to do something you wouldn't do yourself. Yeah. And the biggest thing, and this is what I love, and I try and apply it to my business even, is getting buy-in. When somebody feels ownership, then they will do more for you than any other threat, any other pay structure, anything else that you could give them. And I mean, that's, that's incredible, man. I mean, that's, that's a lifetime of lessons right there. It is. And again, we had a 19 year old kid that came up with, um, he came up with this idea for us to do something. Normally people look at 19 year olds and say, what does this guy know? Mm-hmm. He had came up with an idea of playing a video game and came to us and said, Hey, I got an idea. This is going to work. Okay. Let's go look at it. He had already set up the uh, sand table. Mm-hmm. He'd already had his buddies practices so they could show us what it would look like. And we went to the commander, and, and, I, and I tell people, this is the essence of leadership. Mm-hmm. And said, sir, we have a plan that we think it can reduce the amount of engagement that we have where we actually have crossfires or some, certain things, incidents. Mm-hmm. Can we, you know, come over and take a look at it? And he said, who came up with it? And I'll just, Private Snuffy, that wasn't his name, but Private Snuffy came up. He could have easily just said, but he said, sure. He said, have mm-hmm. you seen it? I've seen it. He said, okay, let's go. And Private Snuffy and his team went through it. Commander was a real, he was old school guy. So he walked away and he said, give me the two fingers, come here. And I walked over and he said, make sure everybody knows how to do this. He said, oh, by the way, oh, put him in for a promotion now. Wow. He walked away <laughs> and I walked over to the kid and said, good job. And I loved that about it. And I yeah. loved that I was lucky enough to have those kind of people to work with. You know, I always heard horror stories about guys serving with people not like that. And unfortunately I was blessed to serve with great guys. Even a guy that's currently on a, he's a state trooper. Now he's a commander of one of the state trooper barracks. And, um, I tell people one of probably the smartest human being I've ever known, mm-hmm. but probably the most modest guy you'll ever meet. And I don't know if I want to say his name cause I don't know if he, he's really modest, but he's a state trooper. And I guarantee you if he's not the smartest guy I've ever met, yeah, he's probably the top three. Guy's a third degree black belt. He's the most dangerous person I've ever met. But if mm-hmm. you ever met the guy, you wouldn't he, know he, it. He was always about, what do you think? What can I do better? How can I help? Yeah. And I tell people, I used to, I'm a thief. And what I mean by that is I steal from you. When yep. I see something in you, a quality that's good, I'm going to steal it from you because I want to make myself a better person, better husband, better father, better leader, better friend. So I always tell people, I'm a thief. If you have something good, I'm stealing it from you. 
Mm-hmm. And that's like the one thing that the military does. Uh, they they do really well is um, leadership. Yeah, I yeah. mean, there's a ton of business schools in, in, in America that encourage their MBA students to go for like a boot camp, you know, for like a month or something, so they can learn they can learn leadership and and just basically how to um, do operations. I mean, you guys, I'm I'm just here and I'm blown away by like everything that yeah. you're saying. Like it, it's it's amazing. Have you read the book Sir Alex Ferguson wrote it called uh, Leadership? No, I haven't read. You that need one. to get it. Very you good. would love it, especially because of the soccer. Have you Have you read it? Yes, I have. It's, oh, a very, it's I, an incredible book. Just when I thought I couldn't. Right, like have you a good more. night, guys. I'll see you later. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I. The, I think the fascinating thing about that's what you just said, and it, it's interesting to me because it was it was one of the most profound things that you you brought up was that sometimes the decision is who has the better idea, not it needs to be my idea. Oh, absolutely. There's a lot of humility in good leadership. That's the first thing I learned. I mean, the Thanks greatest, for saving me on that one, Micah. <laughs> but, no, no, he's absolutely, <laughs> but one of the greatest leaders I've ever served under, it was a gentleman my first two years in the military. He was from the Philippines. A guy could barely read or write, but he, because of, he was an old school guy, he knew how to do his job. I saw how this guy did things, and I tell people I learned so much. But he used to always say, and his favorite word was pogi. Pogi is a word handsome in Tagalog, which is the Filipino language. And he'd always say, pogi, how should I do this? Yeah. And I'm looking at him going, and his last name was Banzan, and he didn't like being called anything but Banzan. I'm like, Banzan, you're like a legend. I'm like, what can I tell you? I'm a stupid kid. Mm-hmm. He said, pogi, you know how I became a legend? No, oh, he says. I listen to stupid kids. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But but to touch on what Mike was saying, here's what I always tell people about the military. The United States military is the subject matter experts when it comes to leadership. Our entire existence is built on that. We have to follow it or our people die. We teach it, teamwork. So it, yeah. you know, I can see where people need to really uh, understand. And that was one of the things I told people on the campaign trail, like, I am familiar with teamwork. I'm familiar with, with putting your ego to the side. It's not about you. Yeah. Awesome. Well, what, 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 speaking of that, what would compel you to say, this looks like a fight I want to get into? Because <laughs> a lot of people are like, I don't want to get in that fight. <laughs> that would be me. Yeah, I don't <laughs> want to do that. <clears throat> well, I, I mean, if you don't know, I've. Because they think it's brass balls or sheer insanity. Most people say insanity. Okay. <laughs> it's, got, um, it's got to be a little bit of both. A healthy it, dose of both. It's yeah. a combination of both. I'm, I'm a product of a uh, public school. I was adopted late. You know, my parents gave me this real great education and an and opportunity, but um, teachers worked with me. I was a late developer. I had some, some mental, emotional, and, and economic, you know, t- development issues that I needed to help with i need help from with. like adoption and yeah, like going I, I through was the actually, system and no i was actually born a crack baby and i didn't develop and the parents my biological parents um were still using drugs and not caring for me so my development was literally stumped and also there was some it's almost physical like you were abuse. born and somebody had paused yes yeah. and that would be so physical abuse. in other words when i was adopted by my my father i was still in diapers turning six because wow. i was i was so underdeveloped so it took a lot to get me. My parents put a tremendous amount of energy, but teachers worked with me. That stuck with me. And mm-hmm. when I, you know. So much that you married one. Married one. <laughs> so I, I started volunteering at schools, you know, while yeah. I was still in the military. Everywhere I've been in my life, I have volunteered at schools because I think education is huge, mm-hmm. public education. When I saw all the problems that were going on here, I'm like, you know, I remember what my father said. Was, my father's deceased. He said, if you would get so frustrated, where you are yelling at the TV or this and that. He said, it's time either get involved or mm-hmm. close your mouth. Mm-hmm. So I said, look, with all the experience I have, I'm hoping that I can sit down at the table with all these professionals. We can collectively come together and start solving problems to better this community. And if I can negotiate with people who are trying to kill me minutes ago, I can sit down at the table with educated professionals and say, look, we're all in this for the same reason. Maybe there's different approaches, but maybe, and that's what I believe I bring. I bring the perspective that I can negotiate. I have also written contracts with the government. That was part of my job. So I know how to write contracts and oversee them to ensure that they are beneficial to us. 
I think that's something the Scranton School District needs. And just, you know, I want to say a voice, but I'm not scared of saying anything. If you know anything about me, I say what I mean. I mean what I say, and I have no regrets. So I know a lot of people on a campaign trail said, wow, you really are brash and direct to the point. And I said, that's what we need. Mm-hmm. We need to stop being nice. We need to stop pussyfooting around it. We need to tell Harrisburg that you are screwing us royally, mm-hmm. and it needs to stop, and we're going to hold you accountable. Is that is that in your – did I cut somebody off? I'm sorry. That's not. You could go ahead. Is that what you – so usually like there's a reason and, and, and when you recognize problems, so I, I think a lot of times you have to recognize where the problem originated to fix it. That way you can never, it'll never, it, it should never happen again if we're all students of history. So what is, I'm sure it's not just the funding thing, but how big is the funding thing? Well, and if, when did you recognize that? When I started doing some research, probably um, 13 months ago, because I wanted to understand how underfunded we were because again, my wife being a teacher and hearing it and volunteering to school. So I started Where'd doing she teach? She's in the district, right? She teaches, she taught at Bancroft. Okay. Bancroft closed. She taught there for 20 plus years. She's now at Isaac Tripp and it broke her heart. She cried. Yeah. It wasn't just the school. It was That's her wrong. home. Was that the one Bertha was telling us didn't have yes. to close? Yeah. They mm. closed it. Yeah. So, you know, I sat down and I started going over the numbers and I said, wait, we've been so underfunded for well over 40 mm-hmm. years. And when I started doing the math conservatively, I'm like, it's $400 million or close to it. So when you sit down and break things down, and I did a little chart, and I said, yes, the state is saying bad contracts, mismanagement of money. Yes, that's been a cause, but that's 10%. 90% Mm -hmm. of our issues and problems come from underfunding. To put things in perspective, we should be receiving well over $30 million. If you do the math by the students annually, we're receiving 12, 15 million. So, so we are that. significant, sometimes 10. 60%. Less. So sometimes we're yes, getting so. grossly underfunded. So, you know, that starts to trickle down and hurt not just the school, but you're raising taxes, so it hurts mm-hmm. It hurts the taxpayers, and then it hurts the businesses because then we start looking at creative ways to generate revenue, which is let's increase taxes, which I'm a firm believer. First of all, a city, a business has to find ways to sustain itself that does not revolve just around taxes. Mm-hmm. That's a recipe Absolutely. for disaster. So I got involved because I said, we're not arguing and saying it loud enough, and we need to hold these elected officials. And I tell people, I don't have a filter. Um, if you didn't know, if you didn't hear, um, two weeks ago I met Joe Biden, and everybody thought I was going to ask him for an endorsement. Mm-hmm. Now, my exact words were to President Biden was, the school district, a city that embraces you as his favorite son, School district is on its knees right now with the state having a knee in our back. What are you going to do, Mr. President? Are you going to step in and help us? We just named a street after you. Mm -hmm. Okay. We just rolled out the red carpet. We need help. We don't need a photo op. And Mm -hmm. the look on a lot of people's face, like, wow, I said, when you have a moment with the president, you only get one chance. You get one chance. You either be, you be selfish and pick it for yourself or you do something to better your community. Yeah. Yeah. What was the response to that? Yeah. He actually responded, and from my understanding, um, I won't divulge who he's has spoken. Um, the White House has spoken with people in Scranton since then. Um, he took it serious. Yeah. Um, I also spoke with uh, Casey, uh, Governor Wolf, and made the same thing, saying, you know what's going on here. Mm-hmm. And I, I can't stand, and I tell people this, this is what the, the state wants us to do what we're doing right now, fighting. Okay? You have the SFT, the school board, and the administration, they're all in a battle with each other. I call it the triangle, okay? Triangle can't roll. We're all collectively working towards the same thing. So what does a triangle do? You can't roll it. You need to smoothen out those edges, put egos to the side, and say, let's work together. Because at the end of the day, we're all trying to work towards the same goal, which is a phenomenal education in a city where we don't tax the people to the point where they have to move the hell out. Mm -hmm. So we need to fix this, but we need to stop fighting amongst one another, unite, and turn our attention to the state and say, oh, now that we're united, you're in trouble. So yeah. so you're saying that they want, not like tinfoil hatty, but but it, 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 it beneficial to them to have the SFT, the board, the all these people, the, the disruption because you're not Are paying you attention. Are you saying it's beneficial to the state? Yeah, because nobody's paying attention to it. And they're like, oh, we can breathe. We, well, we don't have to. I agree. Yeah. Yeah. They, they look at, they. They put a financial recovery officer here, so they put us in what I call professional timeout. But what have you done to accept responsibility? 
that's for our 10% of mismanagement. But mm-hmm. what about your 90% interest Underfunding. in this? So mm-hmm. how about what, what, there has nothing been done for that. All they have said is shame on you. So yeah, if, I'm yes. mis- and if I'm not mistaken, what, what's that? What's the person from the state called again? Uh, Dr. Candace Finan. Yeah. What's her, what's her title? title. Yeah. She is the recovery officer appointed yeah. by the state. I don't know if and it I was believe, the secretary of education or the governor. I believe that salary is $200,000. Yes, it is. She yeah. is. Making two hundred. To, now think about that. She's here, but think about that. The state is putting us in this time out and saying, shame on you. But so what brought, what like, what brought about the, um, the underfunding? Why are we underfunded? I don't know. And one of the things we're I not said an people, urban school. I think is a big yeah. one. No, we are urban school. We're the fifth. We're, we're, we're the not fifth funded market. as one, are we? Yes, we're the we're the know. fifth. We're the most underfunded urban school district in the com- in the state. Got it. Okay. We are the fifth largest in the state, and we are the most under. If you take right now, there's a lawsuit going on to put things in perspective, and there's I believe six school districts that are involved in that. If you took to any two of those, put them together, we are still. More underfunded than both of those together. That's how badly we are underfunded. To me, I mean, I I think your triangle example is really good. I mean, because as I've kind of sat back and watched some of this and, you know, this is a big deal to me. You know, this is for me, this is a huge deal. I'm a business owner. I live in this town. I have two kids at Scranton High School. So this is a real big deal to me. Um, You know, I, I literally was down at the rally today out on the square, uh, you know, going and seeing some friends and, uh, you know, teachers that are out there. Uh, you know, I coached soccer at the high school for a while. Like, I mean, this this is a big deal. And to me, it, it genuinely feels like it's not any one particular person or group of person's fault. It's kind of everybody. Absolutely. I mean, it really does feel like, you know, and this is just me. This is how I'm wired. Um, I think of the kids primarily. Mm-hmm. You know, it, it, this is about the kids. It's the only reason we're doing this. It's the only reason we're here. Um, but if we don't pay the teachers properly, we don't have good teachers for the kids. So it is a, you know, this is just me. I'm Does against the fair funding. Cover the gap of that. If we were receiving, the salaries? Well, yes. Yeah. If okay, we were receiving our money. Yes. Yeah. Right. No, I mean, to me, it, like, and this is just me personally, this is just a personality thing. It's not a legal thing. I'm, I'm against striking. I don't like striking. Um, to me, it seems like a very unproductive way to get things done. Uh, I much prefer let's sit down at the table and figure this out. And that's the thing that's been so frustrating is where is the adult in the room at the state level? You know, Marty Flynn, Kyle Mullins, now well, Tom actually, Welby. Like, actually, well, and today that's what talking, I'm saying. Oh, okay. Like, that's what I'm saying. Like, I feel like even some of what you're saying and some of the conversations I heard down there today, it's like, okay, thank God. Finally, it seems like, um, you know, the, the, the people that work in Harrisburg are going to do, do the work. They're going to go and fight. Hopefully. Um, but why does it always have to get to this point before something happens? Because you have, whenever you have, here's what happens. Turnover. And when a new regime comes in, yeah. that does not always get passed down. Mm-hmm. So that's part of the problem. So you have to have people that are passionate. Like, like when you get elected, and this is the advice that was given to me by someone, you come in with three different things that you want to focus on. You don't leave without accomplishing those. My number one thing is fair funding. I will not stop. I'm dressing up in my uniform and not because I want attention, mm-hmm. but because the politicians are, if nothing else, they're very gets predictable. It, but it gets, it gets attention. their attention. So yeah. I'm going to Harrisburg on one, on all, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, and I am walking the halls, and I'm asking every single one that I can meet, will you stand up for funding for Scranton? And this is not a political stunt. This is, I told people, whether I had won or not, I was going to do this yeah. when the election's over because I'm sick and tired of our city hurting. You are hurting families, teachers, students, businesses. Yeah. Will you be happy when we're gone? And my question to Governor Wolf was, do you want your legacy to be the governor that put the Scranton School District in receivership? Um, That's all the bets person? are off then. Yeah. That's it. But, but do you want that to be your legacy? That's going to be an embarrassment. On the national scale, that the mm-hmm. president's hometown school district, mm-hmm. when he is touting education as being part of Build Back Better, mm-hmm. that is part of the plan. If you've read it, he is touting education, mm-hmm. and we're going into receivership. That's yeah. that's 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 a a stain on anyone's legacy. And honestly, so, the school district is probably the biggest problem that we're facing right now. Yeah, I mean, parking is right there. Park, parking close. number two, but I no. think you know. Looking back, I I bought my property in two thousand five. I was paying eighty five hundred in taxes. 
<clears throat> I'm about 14,000. That's crazy. With the majority of it being school taxes. And, you know, just because you can raise something 3.4% a year every year doesn't mean you should. You know, that's kind of just saying, ah, we'll be fine. We'll keep spending. We'll but keep that spending. shouldn't we'll be. be a problem it's if everything else is working properly. Right. Absolutely. You Wait, know, your property tax? 14000 For your building downtown? That is yeah. crazy. And, and, and do you know the recovery plan calls for an increase in your taxes for the next three to four years. Yeah. So if we follow that recovery plan that the state has put in place, he's going to end up paying all of you going to end up paying that. And I'm going to end up selling. I, well, see, and, that, and some people try to say, well, your motivation for me to get involved was property tax. I don't pay property tax because I'm wounded, retired, medically retired combat veteran. So when you have been con- wounded in combat and you're medically retired because of those wounds, I didn't know that. Yes, you do not pay. So I'm exempt from property tax for the Can rest I of my life. You? Come on. Can you, so, Ty, so, will you adopt us all? I, I put all your property in my name. So, so <laughs> briefly the other day we had this conversation and he's like, you told me your kids, how old are your kids? 25 and 21. Okay. So not in Scranton school. Day. Nope. And you don't pay property tax. And my wife's over, she's 26 years. So she's at the pinnacle of yeah. teaching. So the raises don't affect her. So that's when people try to say that you're getting involved with that, I'm like, yeah, you don't have a selfish there, dog in this fight. There is yeah. nothing like leading, like you're just here to help. So, and yeah. that's the part I hope that, I mean, people did understand it and they voted. You know? I, I, I love that, that people I got blown away in the primaries and barely made it <laughs> to yeah. being second. So oh, yeah. Yeah, no, that's great. Yeah, I mean, like my thing is like everything that you're saying, I, I, I'm i just sitting here and asking myself, where's the leadership? Like, I mean, for you, I, you saw Thank that. Thank God you're there now. Right? Yeah. yeah. No, I mean, you yeah, saw. Yeah, but he might not have any power. But but you uh, but you saw we'll get that. There. We'll get I've there. got we'll a kind of voice. There. Right. You saw that. Like over the years, for you to be able to articulate and and say, you know what, ten percent of whatever is happening is due to mismanagement. The other ninety percent is underfunding. So all these years, where's the leadership? They, right. they couldn't realize that. They couldn't recognize that for some of the things that you are planning to do. Right, it takes. So I don't know. It seems like, like common sense. You, things, you don't would they? think but, it'd but be unified like, by this, you know, from the school board. They'd be like, all nine of us. Yeah, we're underfunded. No, Let's I don't really think. Let, it's, let him finish his point. But yeah. I, I don't know. I mean, so that was like one of the things I was going to ask. Do you think maybe because of like your military background too, you're able to understand leadership and management a lot better than the most of these guys? I, I don't want to say better than anyone. I just say we. I mean, I like, always, I, most of we'll these guys. Say, absolutely. Of these I just guys. always tell people we're the subject. The military is the subject matter experts when it comes to that. You have to have a clear understanding or you don't survive 25 years. Most people that don't grasp leadership and understanding the cohesiveness and teamwork and working collectively towards accomplishing a goal, their careers are over very quickly. And we always tell people, if you last 25 years, you understand how it works. So, again, as I come into the board, one of the things I'm going to try to instill in everyone and hopefully help is look, we need to stop fighting amongst each other. We need to unite, and and we may have differences of opinions on how. Which is okay, but I can. That's all. That's okay. Yeah. Fresh ideals are great, but I'm willing to listen, and that's the most important thing. Are you willing to listen to me? Is what I'm going to ask, mm. because I'm willing to listen to you, because you may tell me something. Um, again, the guy that I did not like in the military one time g- gave me some, uh, you know, here about your career. Do this. I couldn't stand the guy. I didn't trust him, but I listened. And I applied it to my career, and that is why I was able to go on and be very successful. It was just about preparation and studying for a class. He said, I see you in class, and you're doing something wrong if you do this. But had I not listened to that guy, what would have happened? you got to check your ego and listen to those in the room, the voices mm-hmm. in the room, and say, what can we do together? You know, Because at the end of the day, it's not about Ty Holmes individually. It's not about Director Holmes. I represent the city of Scranton. City of Scranton is drowning, and I need to work with you all so that we can pull it out together. You you represent the kids, right? Yeah. The future, the future. future of this world. Yeah, and and I think that's the biggest thing that is missing. You know, like all these guys get, and we were talking about one of them the other day. You know, they get they get on the board, and then it becomes all about them, yeah. and they have no understanding about leadership, how to lead, and how to do things. Right. So hey, thank you, thank you. Thank that's you. that's amazing. Very fascinating. Like I had a lot of questions I was writing down. I'm like, man, you're like spitting truth. Thank and, you. And that's amazing. Do you do you think that uh 
Northeast Pennsylvania is very well known for its political environment. Yes, it is. Uh, probably nationwide to some degree. <laughs> yes, it is. Maybe globally to the people who pay attention. Do you think that that uh, tribalism that has probably been prevalent here for many a decade has now apexed to a point where it's a log jam? No one is, there's nothing getting done because it's factions within factions having arguments about stupid shit and never once thinking about like, oh, at the end of this road are children. I, if you would have asked me this question a month ago, I would have said yes. But after what I witnessed today, no. What I saw today is Marty Flynn, Kyle Mullins, Bridget Kozarowski, and um, I can't remember the other Tom gentleman. Tom Welby. Tom Welby, and there was another gentleman. Seeing them stand up there and they owned it saying we need to do better and calling it out and calling Harrisburg out and calling their colleagues out. I, I think that changed my perception. Also, this election, you know, people said, hey, you're a person of color. You're in Northeast Pennsylvania. You're never going to get elected. And I, first of all, told people, watch. I love when you doubt me. <laughs> but people electing, and they didn't just elect me. Uh, and I don't, I don't put solace in this, but this is just to give credit to the people of Scranton. Everybody else, all, everyone else that ran for school board was a Democrat and Republican. They were cross-filed, right? So they were, could get both votes. I could only get the Democratic side because I didn't win on the Republican side. And I actually beat every single one of them uh, on the Democratic side. I beat everyone. That says a lot that a black man in Scranton in 2021 got elected. I think the logjam, people are starting to say we're done because it's not getting us anywhere. We're, we need to change our political landscape. We need to change are people that are representing us and they're demanding the representatives speak out. When you get a chance, go back and watch the tone in of, which, today's thing. of today's thing they spoke. They were very direct. They had no problem calling people out. That's what we need our officials to do because politicians hate to be called out mm -hmm. and they owned it today. And I was proud. And I text Marty, I'm proud of you. That was what we need. We need you to stand up, be present, forget about my father said, you should never be more concerned with keeping your job. You don't do your job. Mm -hmm. Today, those elected officials, they all did their damn job. Well, and and to speak to that, you know there's nobody in this world that's more willing to give Marty Flynn an earful. You yep. um, know, Micah. Me. <laughs> like, listen. You? No, I don't no. like him. I don't like him. No. no. But I will say, today, it was very impressive. I will give him full credit for that. And he I looked think, like he looked like the person that should represent us today. And I yes. think, and I think that's the point where yeah. I was getting to, where it's like we hit this this thing, and now the veneer is falling. Well, I think people are realizing you can't do business as usual. Yeah, no, I think I, it needs yeah. to end. Like but, it's it's, I mean, it's great. Well, so I'm just gonna say, I mean, let's hope it's the start of something good, and not just an optics, right? Because they could they could stand up there and kind of like own it but it's more like an optics and then they go back wow. and not do anything but actually this is going to be the start of them getting up and say you know what we got work to do and we're just going to dig in our heels and start doing some work so here's like a couple thoughts that i've had like i run a business i run stores okay and i know what every single store is doing you just don't know how to run elections no i don't <laughs> I don't. Jeez, just, I just, just never go. Ended. Never ended. go pound sand. Pound sand. So anyway, so I know this is why you're my favorite. I'm gonna. I'm just gonna pull the plug. I'm, I'm done. I'm fucking done. So just anyway. talk about being Greek for a minute. It'll make you feel better. Opa, souvlaki, spanakopit. Anyway, so oh, uh, Alex, you, it's only out of love. I know. It's only know, out of love. I know. So. <laughs> I know what goes on in all these stores, okay? And I, I know, <coughs> hey, I got to keep track on inventory. Hey, I got to keep track on this, how our order's going, whatever. And I understand, you know, actually, I don't know what exactly a state rep does on a day-to-day -day basis. I don't. But some I, do nothing. Some do nothing, yeah. So I would say, you know, the main and important things are roads and bridges, you know, your school district, you sure. know, the cities and boroughs and townships that you're in, you know, sanitation, stuff like that. Why has no one kept an eye on this? Why has no one said, oh, shit, you know, it looks like we're underfunded or, oh, shit, it, you know, maybe, you know. It seems to me, and if I may interject and cut Ty off for a moment, what Please. he said before, where it's like new regime, 
Right. And, and it's almost that. like the, the whiteboard gets. But it should be like, like these wiped. are these are the Ten Commandments. You must follow them. Keep an eye on this. Keep an eye on that. You know, whatever. Everybody's but got an agenda, man. We, we, I know. We, the people, though, just take a lot of responsibility because we're allowing this. Oh, yeah. We because vote we continue these assholes, to vote yeah. and we elect people that aren't doing anything. Mm-hmm. And I tell people, forget what the person's saying. Right. I don't care what you're saying out of your mouth. Mm-hmm. Show me your actions. What I can tell you right now is the, the group that stood up there today and talked. I specifically talked to each and every one of them, except for Tom Warbley, which I will start. But I he's a, he's I, 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 yeah, I know, I know yeah, but, but I just no. don't have his number. But I yeah. talked to oh, Bridget. We'll I talked to Kyle. I'm not going to let them forget. This is Good. something I'm going to stay on because I wanted to get in this position just because, sadly, sometimes you have to have a title for people to listen mm-hmm. to you. Yeah. I don't need one for my ego. This is not about mm-hmm. ego. But I promise you, like starting, I told them, starting next week, I will be down in Harrisburg. And I will be knocking on doors going, where you at? Funding. Are you retired? I am retired. Oh, so you got all the time in the world. <laughs> the Not only that, oh. I got, I, I'm full of piss and vinegar. And I tell people. Yeah. I, I, Those I, are my I, favorite I, chips. There you go. <laughs> you need help. <laughs> but but you know what I mean? Like, they they, they get, the, the uniform gets you in the door, right? Yeah. Right. Okay. Well, the uniform gets you in the door. I promise you, I'm using that. And when I open the door, and then I'm going to say, okay, great. Mm-hmm. Conversation about funding for Scranton because you're screwing us. Mm-hmm. I'm not. I don't do kind or gently. Are yeah. you never going down alone? Uh, I can't say whom, who's taking me down, but I have a very powerful person that is going to be escorting me around through. Jesus. Will you tell, me, will you tell us after the podcast? I will tell you after the okay. podcast. But that, <sighs> that person has agreed to will walk we me through. Will know Tuesday? Um, you will know. Oh, yes. You will know Tuesday? You will know. But that person okay. has a lot of influence, and that person's walking me. So I'm, And it's a person that uh, is very familiar with that place. You but, look uh, excited, genuinely. We, you just lit up. I am. This, this, well, that, is that's it Dwayne Johnson? This is the Rock Johnson. It's how you get things done, though, unfortunately. Yeah. yeah. Because when you play politics as usual, it's and this is why politics frustrates me, and I kind of never want to get involved in it. It's such a slow process. Yeah. Yeah. There's so many hoops to jump through. The legislation and whipping and back and forth. It's just, it's miserable. I love when you just walk down there and be like, hey, this is what we're doing. And it's done. We had, I had, a, I had a, a woman on here. I had uh, Representative Rosemary Brown and Eileen Miller talking. They're trying to get the, uh, the hands-free bill so kids aren't texting and driving. And Eileen Miller... You should meet her, man. She's a trip. Really? Uh, oh, she goes, she will knock on every door. She doesn't give a shit. She doesn't right. give a shit. She lost her son in an accident, and she does not give a shit. And she's unbelievable. And But they've been fighting this fight for seven years. Wow. Seven years just to get New York, New Jersey, Ohio, Maryland all have hands-free oh, we're, bills. We're surrounded. It shouldn't take yeah. that long. Yeah. 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 And everybody, it's like you see people driving out of New York, and they're like, oh, sh- Facebook. Like they come right into Pennsylvania and they're on, they're on Instagram. But I mean, like going back to what he was saying about like the slog of it, like it just takes, I mean, Marty, all those guys have been talking about this for years, mm-hmm. for years. Yeah. And, and, it, and it just like, you got to go on an indefinite strike. Well, <laughs> oh, and then you got to take away the health care. Yeah. What was that about? That's. I, can, um, can I ask you a question? Right. Absolutely. This is not, this is not tinfoil hat shit. Well, it might be. <laughs> um, so I'm, I'm really against the mail-in ballots um regardless of whatever tinfoil hat reason people think i have do you think that the outcome of the election would have been changed on election day if nobody had a mail-in ballot and they had to go show up okay we'll say it because i don't know if you no, can no, let him yeah mm-hmm. go ahead 100 percent. if you look at the person that was number one in the mail-in votes they were last in in-person voting right. on election day right. in the school board I emphatically 100% believe that had it. Especially after Monday night. After Monday night, I definitely think because um, I was at the polls. My wife was at the polls. I I received. The ire must have been insane. I received over 100 text messages on on election day saying, wow, like people that were at different locations telling me. So, yes, if there was no mail-in vote, Tom Borthwick would be on the board. Which is a shame. We had him on here. Yeah. I think very highly of him. He's a smart guy. Very smart He's guy. He's doing it for the right reasons. I don't under, and again, it just it just goes back to what we've been saying. You will you know, it's it's doing the same thing over and over and expecting a different result. Well, he's the, the definition one guy, of insanity. He's the one guy that you know mm-hmm. is there for the right reasons. Yeah. 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 I mean doing it for the right reasons. Well, I mean, but like look who was on the board. I mean, literally it's a it's a group of people that had, you know, 
financial interests in daycare, so they yeah. canceled the daycare program. You have people literally drinking in the middle of uh, finally, school board meetings. I finally meetings. found that video I sent it to you. Yeah. Did you guys see it? Um, yeah, yeah. You have people that don't even have kids in the school district or kids didn't go to – like, it's a group of people that – are not committed to the cause. And what you had, I think, with the group of the four of you that were running was four people that were highly committed to the cause. And it is just a true shame, especially after Monday night, because I watched that. And, Did you uh, watch it? I didn't watch it. I watched the whole thing start to finish. I promised my wife I wouldn't go down there. Okay. Because <laughs> I'm like you. He asked me to go, and I'm like, dude, it's going to be a barn burner. Like, I, it's going to be a I'm wild. very much wired like you as far as speaking my opinion. Um and I didn't have an election the next morning so I could do whatever I want. Um, <laughs> and uh, she made me promise not to go. And so I watched the whole thing from home and I was seething, you know, and, and Mr. Connors, Mayor Connors, Jimmy Connors, whatever you want to call him. Um, man, did he speak well um, in the way he was treated, the way his wife was treated was an absolute embarrassment on our area. I was sickened by what I saw. Number one, you don't treat a three-term mayor. Right. You don't treat anyone like that. Right. But a three-term mayor, right. you give him his due. His wife yielded her time to him, and they said, it can't be done. Wait, there is no law. It, yeah, it, this, isn't, this isn't federal law. This is a school board meeting. If he mm -hmm. wants to speak an extra two minutes, you just do it. You do it. Yeah. And I think, I, again, to answer a question, I, I know for a fact that I heard on election day, um, specifically from people who were not in support of me before they said, yes, I'm voting for you because of what happened at that meeting. And did you, uh, did you speak? No, I, was I, in I, and out. I, I didn't go. I didn't go to the meeting okay. just because I felt it would be construed as political and it would be a distraction. And I did not want That's to fair. do that. So I had made the, and I reached out to the SFT and said, I'm not. And also teachers are, have been from day one, really big supporters of, of all of us. And I didn't want us to walk in and we get a standing ovation or anything mm -hmm. because then we'd be considered grandstanding. Yeah. So I said, but I want to keep the energy focused on where it needs to be. So I told him I would not be there. I did watch it all, though. I tell you what, yeah. after today, after the past couple of days, I'm feeling significantly more optimistic than I was over the past couple of weeks and months. Well, that's selflessness, though. That's awesome. So, so now... I've been following it from the outside pretty much, you know, reading some articles yes. here and there. So <clears throat> right now it seems the fight is between the school board and the teachers. Well, I seems. mean, it, seems. It, it's, it's between the, the it's, uh, it's still between central administration. It, it's all three right it's right now. It's still triangle. all three right now. And it's, it, they're still trying to hopefully trying to figure this out. And again, when I'm hopefully when I'm in the room, one of the first things I will say is we have to stop this. So, so like, again, looking at it from the outside and looking at the triangle and smoothing the edges and all that stuff, like you said, like, literally, there's, like, two fights right now. There's the that internal triangle fight, and then there's this unified front to the state. Well, let's we're not, go we're not, to the state. We're not unified yet, and that's well, what we need to do. You need Therein to. lies the problem. But that's like, the problem. Yeah. Let's go to the state, and then we'll get what we get, and then we'll, you but know. But they've been doing that. They did it. There was a one-time payment. That happened to the school district. Yeah, but that was like nothing. nothing. But that's what I'm saying. It's almost like no, we it's need almost, more. It's, it's almost like that the school district is 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 being looked at from my thirty five thousand foot view because I don't know what the hell I'm talking about most of the time. Is that they're they're being treated like an incessant dog? It's like here, here's the yeah, treat. Go here's over some there, scraps, and now yeah. I've, I've got you out of my hair for about right. however long of a period of time. But, but it's like louder national yeah, but louder you, you gotta understand the last time the teachers went on strike and i told my mother this i said i've never seen the community organized again for a teacher's strike right the last time Ever. That, that's the big difference is i i think i think that when they went on strike last time that the community was kind of like no 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 they yes. were on no they were there no no they were against i them. saw a bunch against, of support no, no. Oh, last, last time, time they went on strike, i can promise you was they were against. somebody who's very tightly in that community they're very against they were very you know? against he's and, absolutely right and oh, i'll yeah, tell you yeah. this oh maybe that's when i was a full liberal yeah yeah <laughs> maybe i don't know no but i'll tell you this i think that, um heading into this one when we heard that the strike was coming i don't think people understand how much the general public was against a strike this time, especially even more because it's at the end of all the COVID stuff and they're barely back I'm not in talking school. About this time. I'm talking about I understand. The last time. I understand. But, and again, it just comes down to decisions. Okay. They chose to strike the decision to pull healthcare 
I've never How is that legal? seen it's legal. It I've is. never seen a decision turn public opinion Boom. so sharply and yes. so quickly because it came across as punitive and cruel. Yeah. Whose decision was that? How does that get made? Was that a solicitor? The solicitor who Audie, who was also uh, who's the solicitor, man? They better is, they better buy their well, uh, he was a nest camera. Well, he was the solicitor for Abington Heights, and when they went on strike, they were allowed to keep their health benefits, and that was brought up by Sean McAndrews at the meeting. When you were the solicitor for Abington Heights, you voted to keep their insurance, and he said, "Well, it was illegal." Well, okay. When we spoke to Harrisburg, I spoke to Harrisburg, someone in Harrisburg. The exact words that were articulated to me was, do you really think this is something we would come to Scranton to enforce? Mm-hmm. Are we heartless? Is this not the middle of a pandemic? My understanding is it's 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 the law that you can, yes. but it's your choice. Exactly. Yeah. It so just, it the, just seems so cruel. I don't. Uh, here's. OK, so my I'm I'm like school board makes the decision. I'm very like political. I'm, I'm like politically. I feel like a Rorschach test. Like, that's how I feel right now. And I don't understand how a group of people who ran on uh, getting in the school board by, you know, trying to be these these good people who care about people. Like, I, mm-hmm. We care about your kids. Mm-hmm. We care about your jobs. We care about this. We care about that. Could actually vote for that. Right. You know, there's, there's, everybody has a walk away number. I figured taking away people's cancer treatment right. would be a walk away number. Like we think. put them Was there. It, it was it just the solicitor's decision, or did the school no, board no, approve it? The school board has to yes. approve it because he doesn't have the authority. What? Have well, I thought it was just him. No, no, no. no. He, but oh, he, he burn them all to the ground. He, no, no. <laughs> I'm not inciting a riot. I'm sorry. He <laughs> told them it was illegal, and if that's your solicitor, and that's your that's the person you're supposed to listen, yeah, you listen to, you have to. That, now, I I don't know what the numbers were when they voted because they did not vote publicly on that, so I don't know what the numbers they were. They should have absolutely voted oh, yeah. publicly on but, that. But they weren't. They didn't vote publicly. But if the solicitor who is the lawyer for the school district is saying it's illegal or I don't even know if they voted. Maybe he just said it's illegal and something we can't, but the solicitor, if you remember at the meeting, he reiterated that it is illegal for us to give you benefits. Um, that's a law I would be willing to break. And I would have, if I had been sitting there, I would have gotten up and walked out of that meeting saying, I'm not going to sit here and entertain this because it's not grand. There's no way you cut if it's the law. That, if it's the law, then the school board wouldn't have you, voted on it. Well, here's the thing: you own I've it. I've never it, heard of this. You you own no. it. You you know what? Had they had voted to keep it, yeah, they they, they might have public opinion on their side right now mm-hmm. for the strike. When they cut that, oh, the town united. I, I, it I seems have bullish. never. I have it never is. seen. I was ready to go out and protest. I mean, again, I don't I like a striking torches. It, yeah, I don't like yeah. striking. To me, I just don't like right. it. Um. I literally went down there and joined them today. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. I mean, because because no matter what, there are certain in uh, inalienable truths in this world of yeah. morality. Yeah, there are some things that 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 transcend whatever affiliation or oh, differences yeah. that you have. Wrong is wrong. I mean, it, it just I, I've never seen anything turn an entire community so quickly mm-hmm. in like crazy. in like ten hours. Well, that it between was overnight that and, and cutting Jimmy Con. Jimmy Connors that, might that be one, that, the other yeah. one. I yeah. took him to lunch yesterday because him and I were together yesterday. He yeah. spent the day. And we walked into a place to eat. And there standing had to be o. standing O, but there had to be 40 or 50 people that came over to our table saying, yeah. I'm disgusted by what happened. And I, I'm like, wow. It's, I mean, still, I, it's still going through the town. Who, the holds, who, who ultimately holds the bill for that decision? Wait, for the decision? The Is it Katie? Well, they all have to vote. And now if she says, is now, she is she a buck stops here kind of person? I don't. From what I've seen, yeah, yes. Wait, did she lose the four year and got the two? No, no she, won she, the won, four. she won. She won both. Yeah. But here's what here's what she automatically the two years because no one ran against her. She she beat the only person that was running against her in the primaries. So by default, she ran on the two year automatically. On the four year, she barely beat Tom. I mean, yeah, I see. Yeah. Like I said, it, may, if it wasn't for mail in votes, Tom was here. He was on. I, I have a really big issue with whatever that chess move is that she's doing. I have a really, really big issue well, with it. They're trying to, what it is, is in, to break it down for people, why she ran for two spots is because you can get a twofer. You can get a person appointed that you want that has your same agenda. And if you are, say, have nothing to say, do if with you are say, if you are president, you can use that person to help keep you in, pres- mm-hmm. in power. Because currently on December 6th, when we go into the board meeting, we have, is that your first official board meeting? That's our first official board meeting. 
you could potentially have four and four. You could have a four and four split where if they, if Katie and says, I want to put this person up, you know, she has to get five people to say yes. Okay. If we, if, if say, if I want to put someone up, I have to get five people. If you don't, you have what's called a four, four split. So technically what you're supposed to do is, okay, December, you have a vote, January, you have a vote, February, you have a vote. If you don't resolve it by then, it goes to the court and then anyone can apply for that position. Here's where I think Tom will benefit. still three months without a, a gonna, decision. We're going to actually try to expedite that because we're going to put in, we're going to actually put in a request to see if we can just say, guys, we're, we're not going to budge. Can we expedite this and go to the courts? Because if not, why should we wait till February, March, April for the people to get proper representation and be at a four fourth split? We need to be able to do things and be able to vote and not be in a deadlock. So that's, you, that's a goal. Do you, so, Aja, <laughs> do you think... Do what you, are you doing once a month for the next four years? <laughs> do, do you think... That could uh, be, a good, no, be a good idea. No, I want... I want, I want, I need Aja for the podcast. <laughs> um, so it seems to me that four, four split means t there's two different ideologies there. Yes. Okay. Like confirmed. And it much. seems like, and it seems like this one e appointment is going to dictate the next two to four years of the Scranton school district. And is there, so no one will break with their team. Oh, or? I can't. I I don't know. I'm, I'm just giving you worst case scenario that we're gonna have a four four. Um, Do you think the public opinion now will be like, uh, folks, we are not we are not cool with what you're doing? I think I think they've heard. I think they know. Mm. They, you'd have to be deaf, blind, and dumb to not hear the people. The people have spoken. Um, the size of the rally. The, the today's the event. Rally? Today's they, event. How many were there? I don't know. 150? 150, but the tone, the words yeah. that they spoke. When I tell you, when you go back and watch it, you're going to be impressed with your, they really came out. And when you have elected officials who normally, you know, they don't really try to invoke them, involve themselves in, in school board. I mean, think about that. You have state reps and, and other people involving themselves in the school board issue. That tells you how big this is. This is yeah. huge. So um, I think the landscape is changing. I think there's a possibility that we might, have to, we might not have to do that. But it all depends on who also comes up. But here's where it happens. If it goes to court, I personally think Tom wins because the argument's going to be very simple. Your Honor, I ran for 11 months. Mm -hmm. I worked. Blood, sweat, and tears. So then I should be in. Anyone else that puts in should... Um, my... my what I would say to them oh, is so if, that's why you wanted to go to court for Tom to win that two year. Yes. Uh, because uh, he'll win. no matter who puts their name in, didn't if they really wanted it, they, they would have campaigned. Aja, for it. Our they campaign is over Aja. Yeah. Thing. They <laughs> would have put as the bad time as I in. Did. If somebody wanted the spot, yeah. then why did you not put I mean right. Right. it was exhausting running for it, but I do believe that it will go. Plus, Tom was also a school board member. He mm -hmm. has kids in a district and he's a teacher. Mm -hmm. He checks all the blocks. Right. Yeah. So So on something like that. Like who, who has the control to you know make a, a board member resign? You know, to the resign people? the people. Yeah. Well, no, I mean that board. Unless there's an ethics violation, that's up to the board member themselves. Now there has to be an ethics violation, and an and an investigation has to be conducted. And if they find that there's something wrong there, then yes. But other than that, I mean, it's up to the board member themselves. Is Shoot. Is there okay? So didn't Katie try and resign last summer? I from I thought it was she tried to resign from the board. My I was told that she resigned from the presidency, and that was kind of when I was frustrated because I don't care how tough things get as yeah, a you leader. Don't tuck and you're run. the president. You don't you don't resign. Who's yeah. president now? Is it still Katie? She resigned yeah. and she re, she retracted it the next day. What, well, what I, happened in that I, twelve I hours? I would have kicked, kicked it off the board. Yeah. Well, and after after last Monday. Yeah. I mean, let's be real honest. She's persona non grata. Yeah. Right now. I yeah. just, I, 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 look, I, I don't think she, she's not evil. No, not at all. No, I know. You know, and I, yeah, and I don't, evil. and I, and I, nobody but, is. They're, no, she's not evil, but she's she not. has no clue what she's yeah. doing. That's but, basically like what I tell it is. everybody. She has no clue what she's doing. I might so, think they're great people, but professionally, I think they're terrible. Yeah. I think, look, if you can't do the heart surgery, there's no reason you should be the cardiologist. 
Exactly. You know, exactly. no matter how great your personality is. Yeah. yeah. You, you can, might be the best. Per- yeah. But if you're if you're grabbing who, scalpels the, from the wrong you end, know. I don't know what you're doing. I mean, oh. good business person can't run elections. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. no. I'm, you know too, I'm too Who good at business. enemies when you have friends exactly. like that. But I, I always say business. people, here's the misconception. People think because you're elected to a position, that makes you a great leader. No, no it no, doesn't. No, no, you just no. won the popularity just, contest. Exactly. That's, that's all it means. Yep. You have to show that in your actions, in your words, in, in the manner in which you lead. And first of all, lead by example. Yeah. The military, we always tell that. Mm-hmm. No different than my father growing up saying, don't do as I say, do as I do. And I take that approach in everything that I do. You know, And I say that to everyone. Just because you're picked to be in this position does not mean you're qualified or you're the best person. Can you do a good job? Yes. But you also have to be willing to listen and also, as a leader, bring everyone together. Your job as a leader is to take your team with all the different personalities and bring them together and say, we have a common goal. Check your ego, check your ego, check your ego, and check your ego, and I check my ego. Let's work. Mm-hmm. I, I was just about to <laughs> recommend, I was like, I mean, this book might be great for the school board Imagine to read. Books. Um, you have tons no, of books. No. Nobody reads anymore. I know, right? Send them, um, send them the YouTube video. <laughs> it's called the, the Triple Bottom Line, and there's a chapter in it. I um, bought that after you brought it up about a month oh, or so okay. ago. Please yeah, send that to me. There's, when we're done with yeah, this. there's a chapter in it that talks about the, um, you know, the Penasco, um River with uh, PPNL, and they wanted to build a dam on, on the river, and everybody was in uproar with you know, the whole thing, you, you know, you're not just looking at fishermen, but you're also looking at, you know, the community, you're looking at, um, you know, people that do sports fishing and all of that. But there was this great guy that was supposed to bring all these guys together to come, you know, kind of like have a general consensus, like what's the way forward. And one of the things that he said, um, you know, that has stuck with me for a very long time. He asked him one simple question, like, who are we here for? Who are we here for? And at the end of the day, they all realized that they were all in this for one thing, which is the critters, right? On the river. Mm-hmm. So the critters? Like, yes. <laughs> okay. They but you say the wildlife. No. No, but, I like critters. Thank you. Okay. But it makes me but, feel like I'm back home in Tennessee. But um <laughs> but but then again, but then again, like with the school board, like the same question I'm gonna ask you guys, right? Who are you guys here for? It's it's the kids. Yes. At the end of the day, they are the ones that you're serving. So if you're in public service and that is the, you know, you know, basically the, um, you know, your audience, the, the target audience that you're serving, then why are you doing something else that is irrelevant or it yeah. like it doesn't position you well to serve that target audience better? Well, yeah. some, some people are using, some people use certain positions for stepping stones. They don't really want to do that work. Yeah. And I'm not saying, I'm not saying that that's the case on the school board, but in general, People will take yeah. positions because ultimately I want to be here, but to get here, I have to take the steps. I just can't yeah. jump his, up. It's his, my entry level. Yeah. Yeah. Job. So, <laughs> Historically, it's been the school board. Yeah. And, and Multiple that's, that's people. Cra- like, that's crazy. That, that's crazy. Like, if you are in public service, right, and you are afraid to lose your job, and you shouldn't have then it. you shouldn't be in public oh, service. I, I agree there. Because, like, listen, you got to be in service and say, look, listen, I'm going to do the right thing. The, you know, the, the thing that the people elected me for, I'm going to do the right thing. And if I lose doing the right thing and somebody vote me out, so be it. But if you're so worried, you know, that you don't want to be losing your job. So like, you're just going to be caving on everything and not really do your work. So you could stay on the school board for what, how many years, right. whatever, mm-hmm. then you shouldn't be on the school board. No. Well, I agree with that. Someone, board. they were saying to me and I, and I told them this was nuts. Um, someone had offered me an endorsement and one of the people that I use as an advisor, when I told him I was not seeking their endorsement, he said it's political <laughs> suicide. And I said, I have to be able to go to sleep at night knowing that I'm doing the right thing for me. Well, I'm going to run the election the way I'm going to run for this position my way in a way that I can be proud of myself, win, lose, or draw. And that was simple. So I rejected their endorsement, endorsement? because I did not believe in them. And I told them that when they called me and said, I will not be seeking it. And he said it's political suicide. I said, but I'll sleep well tonight. Exactly yeah. right. Um, See, I, I, I are I, you comfortable I, saying who it was? <laughs> Michael likes to stir pot. <laughs> yeah. Listen, I'll ask anything. You could say no. I'm okay with no. Well, it, well, offline, my wife, we'll my wife tells me no a lot. Um, it seems to me that like there's a new. 
a new older if this makes sense like the way it used to be is now resurging where it's like it's for the people it's for the kids it's for i've seen this a lot on both sides now over the last especially like since COVID where it's, it's like, it seems like 10% of the left took crazy pills, 10% of the right mm-hmm. took crazy pills. And somebody needs to really speak for the, yeah the, the quiet majority, which yes. is the middle. Mm-hmm. And it's like, whether you lean a little center left or a little center, right, it seems like the pendulum is trying to get there. And it's just nice to hear somebody like you of your character and your caliber say, I really don't, I'm not going to, I'm I'm in this for the reasons that are not what the reasons you think they are or assume they are because you think it's just everyone who runs for office is just a, a scumbag. Yeah, you're right, and and it's funny because as soon as I won, everyone said, "Hey, let's start thinking about your next." Wow. And I said, I I went ahead and closed my bank account. Everyone says, "Why would you do that?" I said, "Because I told you and I made it clear, I was running for this to fix these issues to work with the team. That's it. I don't have any other political aspirations." I don't care what position you offer me. This is what I want to do. And I'm going to walk away. Mm-hmm. I told, I made it clear to everyone. The machine I was doesn't like that. No, no, but that's okay. I tell people I'm not in it for popularity. My children love me. My wife loves me. My parents love me. I'm all good. You need, all this, you is, this is amazing. The, like, yeah. the, yo, thanks for sharing that. Is it So can we say um, school board president? I hope so. We'll see. Time will hey, tell. Man. Hey, uh, you, got, you got a politics. So I want to. I want to ask a question <laughs> about the 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 fair funding. You're going. To, so what happens? Okay, let's. What happens if you're successful at the end of next week? And what happens if you are unsuccessful? I don't know. I can't determine success by anything other than getting signatures. I'm going to try to get some of these elected officials just to commit to putting their name down on a piece of paper, saying they identify, they understand, and they support. Um, Scranton getting fair funding. Scranton getting fair funding, then sending it off to the governor. Um, I think what Marty Flynn did, Kyle Mullins, Bridget Kozarowski did today is actually going to go a lot further than what I did. Yeah. I think what they did was amazing. So we're working it from multiple angles now. And first of all, there's, you know, that's going to be helpful. If you're getting slammed as the governor is going to from six different angles, at some point, either he's going to cave or he's going to have to speak up and do something. Mm -hmm. So I think it's a combination, a collaborative effort. If we are all constantly putting pressure and like we had said before, you don't put pressure and then just back off and walk away. No, we stay on them and we stay on them and we stay on them until this happens. And then after we get fair funding for say this calendar year, the next year I'm watching you. If we do not get where we're supposed to, we're back. They need, it needs to be. Is this a yearly struggle? It shouldn't be. It should be once they resolve this, it shouldn't be a problem, but it could be. Does anybody argue with the math? Everyone is, and that's why they're being sued right now. They, 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 everyone argues with the math except the Republicans um, in wealthier school districts. Of course, they don't because they're getting funded properly. Yeah, so there's a certain um, there's a certain percentage that the state calculates based on HUD figures and population and all that stuff, and it says, okay, you deserve like three point something percent, you get fifteen percent, you get whatever. You know, it's it's like a weird scale, realistically. Honestly, um, I, I I wish you guys could have seen the 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 thing today. Um, Amazing. Was it it's, probably on Facebook? It is. I, I, there'll be. It, it's yeah. going to be all over the place. Like yeah. it, it's. It's the kind of thing. Like I can imagine if if you're somebody who, like a Kyle Mullins, I know pretty well. Why you ask him if he wants to come talk about it? I ask him yeah. all the time. Um, he doesn't like you. Well, it's because he thinks I'm going to ask him all the hard questions. Yeah. But he's he's like, like, how did you shut so- everything down last year, <laughs> Kyle? Yeah. How is your hair so beautiful? <laughs> yeah, he is a handsome man. Except I went and gave uh, Bill Davis some sunglasses for him because the sun was right in his eyes, so he looked like he was sucking on lemons the whole time. <laughs> um, Today, yeah, yeah. Oh, nice. Or yeah. he ate one of my edibles. <laughs> yeah. But uh, I, I, I remember one time talking to Kyle, and and he, it was when we were kind of getting to know each other a little bit. And uh, he was in the store and I and he said, yeah, I got to start campaigning again. And I said, how do you do that? Like, how do you have time to campaign yeah. while providing good governance? And he said and he kind of laughed. He goes, yeah. well, that's how I campaign. He goes, if I'm doing a good job, I don't have to go ask people to vote. Right. For there, me, you don't vote exactly. for me. there you go. And it was in that moment that I was like, oh, I like you. Like, I don't care if we disagree on things. I like you. But that's like the weirdest thing, because like 90 percent of like people in Congress spend mm-hmm. almost 99 percent of their time campaigning yeah. how much how much does the uh how much does the 
uh, the judge seat that Mary Walsh Dempsey oh, just won. How much does one, that pay a year? One eighty. I think it's like one seventy nine. How yeah. much do you think between the two of them they paid? Oh, oh to I know. try and win that I know, seat. I know. Like uh, an, over half two a million. million. No, 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 no. I heard over a million. Really? On yeah, one side. Well, I didn't say two, over a like million. Two million? Uh, I th- the number I heard was 1.3. No, no, no. So that was combination of um, the other guy. Like pack money. No, it yeah. was the guy who ran in the primary. Uh, no, no, no. I'm talking no. about one candidate. No, it no, 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 wasn't. No. It was all it was. three. All three. All I think three. it was an aggregate. Yeah, it was an uh, aggregate of all the, three. Here's the crazy thing about that, that race. Yeah. Right? Same thing with that guy in New Jersey. <laughs> who spent $153, yeah, the trucker, yeah. who yeah, and he the, beat the 18, Senate president? 1800. Yeah, yeah state New of New Jersey Did you know Senate about this? president. No. It was it was no, something no, no, like thirty no. two hundred dollars, but yeah, but he had a, um, he bought he crushed. It was them. like ten grand or so or something. No, or it was, eighteen thousand. It was one hundred fifty six dollars for like an ad. Well, that yeah. was the running. That won. was the running joke. And he beat the sitting Senate president. Of and he New ran Jersey. on our taxes are out of control. I'm going to fix the taxes. Sixty four. That was it. Yeah. Sixty four dollars. So Dunkin Donuts. straight to the point. So yeah. one of the things that I read about that, the progressive Democrats of New Jersey were like, "We're done with this machinist. We're done with this guy. Let's try the truck driver." You know, which is amazing. I mean, that's know. that's what's happening. It's it like, is. It's like I don't know what the people are tired of being Scr- jerked Scranton around. Needs yeah. to wake up to but that. The thing, I think. The, the thing is, like a lot of times, and the, and I hope that people don't change when they get elected and get into office and hold their values, right. because like when you get into office and you start realizing that it's a machine, yeah, and you're fighting against the machine, right. and you need to stand your values. And a lot of times, what yeah. they do is they just. It's almost like that's that's yeah, your, your sole your job. Legs. Stand yeah. your values. Yeah, Everything and, else is bullshit. And that's most cool. of most of most of them go and they just realize and then, you know, kind of like one, one we know. I mean, when I when I she was running, Katie, I was like, man, she's awesome. She has some great ideas and everything. Careful you talk about. Continue. But um but then, then now <laughs> like but All now of a sudden it's like Yeah, but now I'm like you know what I'm saying? Because she just lost that. So, I mean, that's one other thing that I would probably say to you. Like, I mean, from everything that yeah, I've heard, that, you are amazing. You know, your leadership qualities, um, your thoughtfulness, um, you know, the way you just think and 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 dis, um, deconstruct things and you break them down. That's amazing. I, I And I hope that you would keep that. Like, when you go, don't lose as that. As accountable as you're going to hold Harrisburg, we're going to hold you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I expect that. I, put, yeah. I tell everyone, I, mean, I put high expectation on myself. Yeah. And I told I, my wife will tell you. She says it all the time. You beat yourself up. Like when I'll yeah. come back from speaking to a group, I would say I could have did so much better yeah. in expressing this and that. And she's always like, you, "Do people realize?" And she always says, "You're the hardest person in the world when yourself." And I said, "Because I'm constantly looking to self improve." But I can tell you one thing: I tell people I'm not a turncoat, and nobody moves me. Like we can work together, but that whole I'm going to change you, and you're going to come up. That doesn't work. Well, yeah. it's kind of like the analogy of, you know, you don't tell an alcoholic not to take a drink. You tell him not to go to the bar. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and you don't drink, so that won't be a problem. <laughs> <laughs> so what is. OK, so what's the future that you want or that you're you're trying to manifest versus the realistic, pragmatic future um, in the next few months? Well, first of all, the realistic um, future that currently exists with following that recovery plan is does everyone here remember little house on the prairie yeah yeah you remember yeah. laura ingles teaching in that one school mm-hmm. yeah well if we follow that recovery plan to the letter that's what we're going to end up with mm-hmm. you're going to have k through 12 in one wooden building with laura mm-hmm. ingles teaching because what? that's what that cost where it's going to strip us of everything and we're going to have a bare bones district what i envision is a robust school district that provides not just an education but also opportunities to do music arts theater um, poetry, different things, because not everybody wants to go to college. Look at some of the billionaires that exist now. Mm-hmm. Kanye West, whack job, billionaire. I don't think he's that crazy. Okay, I like. He Kanye. might be brilliant, but Kim Kardashian, billionaire. Yeah, Kylie. None of them went to college. Not everyone needs to go to college to be successful. We need to look at trying to get kids that want to do things in trades. How mm-hmm. can we help facilitate yeah. that? It's like it seems like we only put our energy into kids that are going to college. Right. We have to look at this in a broader perspective and say, we have to help all the kids. Because I tell people, if you don't, the kid that doesn't go to college or trade school or something else, 
that becomes society's problems at mm-hmm. some point. You're oh, only yeah. as strong as your weakest link. Right. Exactly. So yeah. I really hope that we can broaden and bake our school district what it used to be, but then add to that, you know, put programs in there, put counseling, um, teach them, mon- mentor them. I want to bring in a life skills class that That's starts huge. in ninth grade huge. that teaches yeah. them not, not just but. But checkbook management, you know, healthcare. Oh, I want to go back to high school. That's yeah. the first time I've ever heard anybody related to a school say the yeah. word checkbook. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Keep going. I mean, Keep but, preach. Yeah. Keep going. But go. I, I mean, and seriously, I want to teach them. Even the, the gentleman. I'm also on the board member of the NDPA Youth Shelter. Do you know, know how many young men yeah. don't know how to tie a tie? Right. And that's and 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 people look at that shame on them. No, it's not mm-hmm. shame on them. Nobody if you didn't grow up with a I mean, father, how yep. could you know? Yeah. If you didn't grow up with a mother to teach you, so I want to put this life skills program. So that we can teach them. And you start at ninth grade, they get four years so that they'll be better off prepared to go into society. Yeah. And we owe that to them. Hey, yeah. if you can make that happen, Aja and I will volunteer. Yeah, no, I I would love that. I'll be I'll be on well, as men. I'll help I'll help as men. And, <laughs> well, if they don't yeah. want to do it in the school district, I will be doing this on my own. So I'm going to hold you I'm gonna hold you gentlemen to that. Yeah, dead serious. I, I I need this program because we're society is failing. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. We're, we're saying, and also, society is saying at 18 years old you're an adult. And I'm going to tell you all, I was 19 years old in college doing the stupidest stuff in my life. 27 years old, still doing. I mean, I'm 39 and I still do dumb stuff. Yeah. 30. It's just part of being a guy. It is. 21 dumb shit. No. So yeah. we just we need to do yeah. more. So yeah. that's what I want to build. I want to build a school district that provides not just for the kid going to college or the kid that plays sports, but the kid that wants to learn an instrument, kid that right. wants to be the next Van Gogh. The kid that wants to be the next coder, the kid that wants to be the next um, Rachel Ray, you know, Tony Hawk. Uh, Tony Hawk never went to college. Look Doing how much he's right. worth. Doing all right. I mean, I, I I don't have a kid in the school district, but do they have? Do we'll they find have one like, for you. <laughs> oh, we're, we're gonna find you. I'm working on yeah. you. For, I'm working on the lady for do they, you. Do they? So do they? Oh, have like, you do they, <laughs> Hold on, this just took a turn. Wait, wait, Ty. They, wait, no. I'll talk wait, to you. You're gonna you add you. matchmaker to your resume, Ty. Ty? Yes. I will talk to you before you do that. Uh, <laughs> There's do something they have, you need to know. Do they so? Do they have like clubs, like you know, like social clubs, in, like a in big schools, brothers like, kind of program, anything yeah, like that? Yeah, or things like that. Like, I mean, my daughter is in the school now, and they have like business club and things like that. And she is Ash is very big on business. She is part of it. She is part of it, and they, you know, they yeah. She um, and then they build things and sell it in the in the school shop and all the all those things. Do they have things like that in the school district? Not to the extent that it should be. That's something yes. we so, need to work on bringing back. From what I know, there's a lot of great synergy at the CTC, the uh, yes. Career Technology Center. So, yes. like, I'm, I sit in the advisory committee for the print department and the, um, the they're, screen, they're screen printing shirts. They yes. never invited they can, me back. No? Oh, oh well, I'll get you back on the list. <laughs> I, I like did, how like, part of this email. podcast is you guys figuring out your differences. What? <laughs> no. Um, so, you know, they, they're, they're involved. You know, there's kids who are phenomenal. I mean, they recommended a person and I hired her and she's making good money. You know, 18, we just hired a girl from the CTC right. program. She's 18 program years old and she's yeah. making great money well, beyond hey, McDonald's. I, tell, money. I had this conversation with my niece a couple weeks ago. She's interested in cosmetology. I'm like, listen, go to your school CTC program, yeah. mm-hmm. do it for free. Yeah. In high school, graduate at 18, come yeah. right out, you have a job. So, real quick, I had a customer who Nothing came about in. about you, real quick, Alex. No, I know. Nothing. So, a customer came in and she was getting something for her daughter. Her, oh, a yard sign, graduate yard sign. Her daughter graduated from a CTC, I think, in Wilkes-Barre and got her cosmetology license, was going to Mansfield for criminal justice and was going to cut hair to yeah. pay for college. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. I was like, yeah, I wish that I could hire this girl. Like, yeah. this is <laughs> what I want. Like, I want yeah. I think entrepreneurship. I, you know, my mother, my mother is a teacher in the Scranton School District for a number of years. Uh, <laughs> she. She 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 took an early out because I you know part of her was like this isn't going well like it's right. not gonna yeah. you know and and here's the thing my mother, um, every student that I've ever met of hers her former students not one my mother's one of two people that have knocked me out through physical violence mm-hmm. <laughs> I have never heard a kid say anything bad about my mother my mother was the one, she's the godfather she's the godmother to a, a girl who went there who was a young girl who had a baby in while she was in middle school. My mother was there for the birth. Wow. My mother, wow. My mother would, yeah, she's the godmother. God bless my her. mother would be buying clothes, making, giving kids trips, money, teachers, shit like teachers that. Teachers are the best. And there are but, plenty, but yeah. That 
form of teacher like my mother, it, they're they're not as willing to do it anymore. They feel like they're handcuffed exactly. about how they can motivate. And, yeah. No, believe it or not, a lot of them are still doing it. They're just doing it quiet or quietly. It's just not being advertised. I see a lot of these teachers are spending money out of their own pockets. Like um, my wife, she goes before school starts, she'll buy underwear, socks, T-shirts and stuff. And she keeps that at school yeah. because we she has kids that show up in the middle of winter with no, no socks on, yeah. no yeah. coats, no yeah. book bags. So there are a lot of organizations in Scranton. This is what I do love that have done book drives and then done coat drives. The police and the fire department do an incredible job every year of getting a, they do a coat, hat, coat, and glove drive every year they do that. Um, they make sure that every kid that wants a coat gets a coat. Some of the kids, even at the shelter, just don't want one. They just want a hoodie. But I do see teachers are still doing that, and we need to do more. Like, I don't know if you guys realize, teachers, when they spend, they could spend $1,000, and instead of letting them, you know, claim that back on taxes, the government cuts it off and says, you can claim $200. Yeah. Some of these teachers spend two or $3,000 over yeah. the course of the year. That should be a credit. Yeah, school supplies. Oh, completely. Yeah. Mm. So we're underfunded, and then teachers are spending out of their own pocket. And think about it, though. We're the lowest paid school district in the state. Yeah. And our teachers. Per teacher, uh, like per capita? Per teachers. We are yeah. horrible. And these teachers are doing, you don't become a teacher because you want to get rich. What's the average, what's so, the average salary? Was it? 30, 30, ours, 32, 32, 32.5. That's the average. We are the lowest paraprofessional oh, God, under 18, 27, 18, like 18, 17, 20, 000, 27. Like for, if you could be a paraprofessional for 20 years and only make 27,000. Yeah. That's right? poverty. So right now, and somebody posted the numbers the other day. It was 2017 versus now. And it was literally like 16, oh, nine. The, for a paraprofessional, still sixteen nine, starting thirty two five, still thirty two five. So you don't go into this business no. for getting rich. No, it's, it's a, a passion. Calling. It's a calling. It yeah. is, and we need to. And I and I say this, and and I know you. I talk a lot. I'm sorry. Well, that's spent, why you're here. Yeah, that's I the spent, purpose. <laughs> I spent twenty five years and more carrying a gun, so I'm trying to solve problems. The problems of our world are going to be solved through education. I have never solved the problem. I've been a band aid on a larger problem. Okay, my job was to come in when diplomacy failed and forced my will or the United States government's will upon you. We were not a negotiating tool. We come in and say, okay, well, time to talk has now ended. You're going to do what we say. This is how it's going to get done. And if not, we're, our army's bigger than your army. We need less of that. We need more diplomacy. And that's only yeah. going to happen with education because education teaches acceptance, understanding, teamwork, you know, camaraderie, the things that we are losing, that we are slowly losing in our society, we need to get back. Otherwise, we're going to continue to spend, um, which is the United States spends more on defense than any three other countries combined. Mm -hmm. Now, yeah. imagine that. We spend more on defense than China. This is ridiculous. But yet we spend, what is it, we're 57 or something like that on education. Mm -hmm. Sweden has never been in a war with anyone. <laughs> They're number one in what they spend on education. They don't send homework home, yet their graduation rate and kids that go on to college is some some astronic num some number like, I believe it's eighty five percent of their kids go to college. Damn, in their Jeez. country. Yeah. So what are we doing wrong? I mean, I like homework though. I do. No, no, there's and nothing wrong. With it. You can do it. Nerd. I grew up with homework, and I I think it's important. Like the Chinese do that. Like you know, oh, the, yeah. the Asians yeah. do that. And I they think it's they have no like, school break. It's like straight. I, I think through. it's important, but there's a balance. You know, there's yeah. a balance. Oh, like totally. I used to go. I used to go to my my uh, my daughter's um, parent teacher conference, and ask for homework, and the teachers would look at me. <laughs> You're a scholar. I, I think that's what you are. You're a scholar. I, I no, think, he's an ass. I think <laughs> he's mean. I think. Uh, I think ultimately it's about communicating uh, despite differences. Yes, yeah. absolutely. And I think, I don't know where everyone's uh, eggs in their brain got scrambled over the last few years, but I, I think everybody needs to stop thinking about, like, I don't agree, therefore uh, they are bad. Mm -hmm. I, I think that needs to go away. Yeah. Well, and they lump one portion of somebody or something it's or some idea it's all the time and it taints the whole thing yeah, but it, it could be a baseball team right. it's like oh those three guys hang out i don't like i mean them. in all You're fairness right. you know what i mean you, yeah 
Um, watch Aaron Rodgers today. Did you watch Aaron Rodgers? I didn't what? watch Aaron Rodgers oh, today. It was, it was incredible. What, what did he happened? do? He was on a podcast. And? What did he say? Uh, it's all the COVID shit. Just oh, when you get a oh, chance, oh, watch oh, it. Oh, you, oh, you haven't seen it today. Definitely go watch it. Okay. It you makes sense. It? Okay. Uh, he's, yeah. yeah, whatever whatever the media is vilifying about him. I mean, look. Interesting. He's, he has, he's got arguments well, that are I mean, valid. That's the thing, though. Like, like when, you, when you meet someone and you sit down with them and you hear their story, Changes. It just changes oh, everything. Yeah. And that's, hey. that's what we are missing. Like We are missing Listen, a lot of that. We have yet to make the t-shirts. 99% of the world's problem come from the frustration of uncommunicated, unmet expectations. That should yeah. be a shirt. You definitely. I just, I know. Make that a shirt. Let's go. I, I'll, I'll I go with trademark you. Hey, what are you doing tonight? Uh, Lavish is doing First Friday. They're selling their own shirts. Bro, and maybe get the you wife, can, come on down. I will you, definitely stop in. I promise you that. And you can convince him to make those shirts because Lavish is now having a brand. You need to make that shirt. Oh, no, uh, it, it's something that I've been thinking through for years because- Put with, on everything. With relationship in, and it mm-hmm. doesn't matter what the relationship is. It doesn't matter if it's husband and wife. Mm-hmm. It doesn't matter if it's friends. It doesn't matter if it's employer employee. It doesn't matter if it's soldier and insurgent. It doesn't matter. It's ninety nine percent of the world's problems come from the frustration of unmet and uncommunicated expectations. I'm telling you now, Amen. trademark. I know. That I should. I should probably stop no, saying it publicly I'm not, all the I'm time. I'm not kidding mm-hmm. you. You should trademark that. But it just put is. Put that on the phones, covers everything because I mean, you're right. And I, it, it clicked for me. I feel like me. I'm sitting across from Jordan Peterson. <laughs> no, but it, 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 okay. it clicked for me one day. Speak Canadian. <laughs> my wife and I were having a conversation and we were having some issues and we were, you know, fighting or whatever. And, and I told her something, you know, and finally it's like I had the guts to be like, okay, I want this in our marriage. She was like, why didn't you ever just tell me that? I was like, are you kidding me? All I had to do was te- say it. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. I'm like, yeah. I've been miserable, not miserable, but like I've been, you know, I've been oh, frustrated for years over right. this one issue. Too much, too much. Just went from Jordan Peterson to yeah. Sigmund Freud. No, but like even down to like expectations on how to discipline a kid. Yeah, she has an expectation on this is how it should be done, and I have a different expectation. Right, but if she and I haven't talked about that, and I go into full dad rage mode, and she's like, no, no, no. If we talk to them, they'll learn. Exactly. And she'd rather use psychological warfare. I'd rather just use warfare, warfare. Yeah. And you know, but if we talk about it, well, now we're on the same page. Yeah, exactly. And even if we disagree, it doesn't matter. We've talked yeah. about it. Yeah, you gotta what, have that. Com- so um, yeah. That so I don't. Where were you in the uh, in the the vote tally? One, two. I was two. Who was two. one? Sean. Sean McAndrews. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, Irish boy. Um, <laughs> he's also he's a really good he's guy. He's a good awesome. dude. I watched him. I don't in the know, debate, him. man. I watched. Yeah, he did. Yeah. He. Yeah. Okay. Just I know you're going to ask a question, but we were all competing against one another, but yet we were all helping. That's what yeah. I said. That's what showed me that there is good in politics. In politics, Sean, Tom, Danielle, we were all competing against one another, but we were all supportive in helping one another. Mm-hmm. So I think that's what I'm getting to is is that once you you know you have the position do do you either via email text message phone call coffee reach out to the current board members to try to or or they just seem yeah like they they're not interested in is that communication like red, red team no no team. I've had communication with board members and then Superintendent McTiernan has reached out to myself and it was actually a very productive conversation she was very welcoming. Um, she explained to me some things that I didn't even know about her. I I had seen her play basketball because a friend of mine went to the same school. So many years ago, I saw her play basketball. Wow. So I told her that and I said, I don't know if that comes off weird, but (laughs) where'd she go? UConn? Yes. Yeah. So I like, she was like, good. She was really, really? she's, she's, yeah. 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 She won a national national championship. championship Good. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. She was a captain the year they won with Rebecca Lobo. Yep. She was the captain. Oh really? Oh yeah. 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 Oh, she was, she's, really, she's like the real deal. She, like if the WNBA had existed back yeah, then, she's, she, she she's would have been in. Get out. Yeah. But she reached out to me and she was extremely polite. So again, you know, I've received warmness already from everyone. And and again, the race is over. You know, we're done. Let's get to work. Yeah. Well, fighting is exhausting. It is. Yeah. Like you can only do it for so long. It's like us at the last uh, parking authority <laughs> meeting. It's like, I'm just tired. Yeah. I'm tired of everything being a fight. Right. Like, let's have a win. Wins are fun. Right. That's it. Wins we are, you're we right. had Wins some good news fun. today. What uh, was the good news? You, oh, I did. Yeah, well, apparently yeah. there's somebody else being public? appointed. Is this public? No. No. No, don't, don't say it then. If no. Can you say it then? Yeah, I don't know. Okay. We'll see yeah. why not. Yeah. We'll see how it goes. No, it's, All it's, right, it's leave it. Listen, don't, don't put it I will trouble. say this. Like, I, I've been very down over the past yeah. year and a half. Yeah, I've been very down about the future, the local, the national, the all just all the crazy stuff that's been going on the past almost two years now. And uh, 
I must say uh, I'm very encouraged over the past couple of days. Good. Very encouraged. Very. Um, you know, I mean, and, and the rea- in life, <laughs> no, uh, or just like the parking authority. No, 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 no. I'm saying like in in general. I mean, like, listen. Um, I don't agree with her on everything, and she and I talk about it. But I think Paige is going to do a really good job. Yeah, yeah. I think she's good. Um, I think she's the mayor. You know, I think she's going to do a really good job for Scranton. I yes. think that you know, you. I think the number one problem in this area is the school I'm situation. The right, it is, and that absolutely brings out another problem. Yeah, and I think you know, having met Tom and talked to him, having met you and talked to you today, I'm very encouraged. Yeah. Um. You know, I've had a lot of frustration with some of the the elected leadership over the past year and a half and how they've handled things. Um. Seeing what I saw today, t- number one, Tom Welby winning. Uh, you got to get to know him. He's, awesome. uh, he's, he's a, a brilliant man. Number. He's a good man. Uh, he he is the real deal. Yeah. You know, having Kyle in his position, I don't know Bridget, but a lot of people that I respect speak very highly of her. Um, and I will say again, uh, really impressed with Marty today. I think I think we have the right pieces in place. Um, to make the change, to, to come out of the hole that and we're that's in. The goal. Hey man, a, bro- yeah. a broke clock is right twice right. a day. Right. <laughs> no, I tell you, no, I'm kidding. Well, I'm kidding. When dude, you I'm watch, totally you kidding. watch that video, you're gonna be, yeah. you're gonna it be was, blown away. No, I, I, I don't I, ever get impressed by politicians. I, 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 I and was, I was telling, impressed. I was telling you this before. I mean, the business post is it's gonna take it's gonna take a long time for a lot of people to get that taste out of their mouth. And you know, it doesn't mean it doesn't mean that we're rooting against them. It means that, like, oh, no, I we're want a little it. bit more critical of of the behavior. Well, no, I mean, I think with Marty, like, listen, I'm trying to be diplomatic, Mike. No, I don't care. Oh my God, I want him to do well. I do too. I really want him to do I well. Do it serves none of us if he doesn't do well. If our elected officials fail, then we fail. Yeah, everybody, yeah. Yeah. everybody. And let's be real honest. I love to be wrong because when I'm wrong, I get to learn and grow. I hope I'm wrong about him. I love that outlook. Like, man. I I really do hope I'm wrong about him. I think I hope that I'm wrong about some of the opinions I've developed of him over the years. Because if if I'm wrong, we win big. Yeah, and, and I mean, yeah. and that's how we grow, right? That's how we right. grow, and we make change. Absolutely. You're right, absolutely. Yeah. So, what do you like to do outside of politics and school boards? Oh. Do you have hobbies? I love motorcycles. What? Um, really? Oh, good lord! I love motorcycles. Okay. Like street bike um, or like I'm, I'm actually a Suzuki Boulevard M109 1800 cc. That sounds got a big boy. That sounds real fast. 1800. 1800. I, 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 is, is that a military thing? I find a lot of people that come out of the military love dangerous motorcycles. Is well, this because you're not getting that thrill? Yeah, anymore? They are, it's not like our lives are all that exactly. safe. Exactly. You know, so it's we like you got to keep that. that adrenaline up. But it's just so much fun. You know what? Honestly, it's therapeutic. My wife yeah. will tell you. Um, when I'm having that day, she, she's ridden on it. She does. She the actually had a bike. She had a bike. Damn. What? She had a, uh, she had a three-wheel. Where she had a Can-Am and she rode. She had a, unfortunately, she has a, a neck injury that now prevents her from riding it. She can't snap. But she, my wife is a rider. She grew up riding quads. And when I, you know, bought the bike, actually, she bought the bike for me for my birthday, a new one. Nice. She jumps wow. on the back and she lets go for a ride. But um, she'll know when I'm having bad days because there are times when I will have, you know, you have flashbacks to, you know, your time in service. I call it sins of your service. Or yeah. uh, recently, uh, one of my soldiers committed suicide and, you know, and, and, you know, you start thinking, did I fail that person? Did I not reach out? Did I not let that person know that I'm there for them? Yeah. And so it was one of those, she's like, you want to talk? And she knows, like, so she's like, you're going to get on a bike? And she knows I'm smart. I'm not going to get on a bike angry. Yeah. But I play the music and just, it's so therapeutic. Riding down the street with music, I've always found that that's a calming thing for me. Yeah. Even at 80 miles an hour, it's super What do you calming. listen to? Oh, come on, I got uh, Leonard <laughs> Skinner Grateful Dead, um, dead Robert head? Plant. Oh my God! Come <laughs> <You're> on, <dead. laughs> what? My wife gets in my car. She will tell everyone. She said, "Seriously, you are the most eclectic man I've ever seen." She goes, <laughs> "She goes, one song could be Jay Z, the next is Robert Plant." She's like, "Yeah." Then it's Travis Tritt, and she's like, "Who the heck am I listening to now?" My 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 playlist. I listen it's like a, it's to everything. Like a playlist of a schizophrenic. It is. Well, my dad. I tell everyone there there were eight of us growing up in the house. I have six brothers and sisters, and my dad and my mom. My dad listened to country. My mom listened to old blues. My sister listened to pop. My other, my brother listened to rock. So I had all of that influence. Yeah. And I just, I again, I told you, I'm a thief. So I took it right. all. <laughs> so I listened to all. Like yeah. I have shocked people when I, I, I have a big old truck right now because I've always wanted a truck. Yeah. Because I tell everyone inside this city boy was a, a country boy dying to yeah, get out. Yeah. yeah. So I finally got a big truck and I pulled in the driveway. My wife said. Oh yeah, I knew that was coming. Yeah, it's <laughs> just a matter of time. It's a it's a Ford F one fifty XLT, 
It's right. I'll show you when we go. Yeah. Well, but my wife said because we had really watched neat. the video by Georgia for Florida Country Line, and they had a blue one. And I said, "Honey, if you ever want to buy me a present, I want that truck." Yeah, yeah. She said people would never guess that you really like a truck. I can and, I could see it in you. See, it's yeah. lifted, isn't and it? Yeah. Was that? Doesn't it have a lift on it's it? It's lifted. Yeah. And I went to. Dude, the, I would have uh, laughed my ass off if you were like an '88 Honda Accord guy. No. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't fit into an '88 yeah. Honda. Like, oh my god! <laughs> I'd, have to, Honda I'd have to sit on the Accord. roof and drive through oh, the window. Yeah. Is you ever see those, a circus car? What you ever see those on? pictures of Shaq and his Ferrari? Oh, I love it's it. It's the funniest <laughs> thing you've ever seen. Um, all right, he's got to go to First Friday. Um, real quick. Uh, should 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 we give uh. Is there any way for the uh, the taxpayers of Scranton uh, to have a little bit of uh, even one percent of optimism in the next few months coming up? Honestly, I believe they should have a lot of optimism. If nothing, if the last couple of days has really shown me that people are willing to work and they want change, yeah, the people have spoken, and I think our elected officials are really starting to listen. And today was an example. That was on their own. They got together and said, "We're going to speak out," and that says volume speaks volumes. When those people, those elected officials got together themselves, they weren't pressured and they said, we're going to do this. So, and I can promise you from the school board perspective, um, I'm going to work my tail off and I don't have a hidden agenda. I'm not running for any other office and I don't have an ego. I just want to help fix this district in the city. So have hope, have faith that we will come together as a team and we will solve these problems. Well, I mean, I, 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 I don't think we can say it enough, but thank you so much. Yeah. Uh, thank you not only for your service to the country, but now your service to um, our community and our kids, man. It's it's very encouraging to know that somebody like you is on board. So thank, thank you. I, I'll let you know between service and, well, service and service. <laughs> The complaints are different on this side. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, if you can't take cons- constructive criticism, you shouldn't have gotten a job. Oh, I expect I it, and I look forward to it because it'll make me a better person and do my job better. Hey, Jeff, fun. You want to come back on sometime? I would love can to. Can we get fourth week this time, maybe? Can we, can I we, would listen to both listen, of you guys. I, I, I sit on several boards, so if you ever want to talk about it, I sit on Penn State's board, NEPA Youth Shelter board. I created a Veterans Vision, I the Rotary. That. Yeah. So if you yeah. ever... I. I I would love to anytime bring, you want me to come. Let's bring you back for back. all of them, please. And then yeah. tell and then and I'm the president ins- of the NAACP, Lackawanna County. I, I was going to really? say like the whole thing. Yes, I am the president of the NAACP. <laughs> Lackawanna, for, La- for Lackawanna County, I am. Jeez, yeah, why are man. you here? Why are you yeah. here? Why are you in well, you so, so bet? Um, <laughs> we're thank gonna, you. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Thank you so much for yeah, being here, you. and uh, thank you so much for. Uh, I'm honored. Thank you. I'm. Uh, I'm. My, I'm I'm kind of excited to see what's good. It's nice to see people who have good intentions yeah. and and their and their moral win. compass is and is, they win. Yes, yes. Thank and you so right. much. Ash, you yeah. want to say it? Nah, Mike can say. It. All right, you say it this week. What a week. Yep. Yay, we're out. Yay.